Okay, hello physical science class. This is Mr. B again, and welcome back to our second video in section one here. Again, it's titled, What is Science? And uh, we kind of were getting a little bit longer on the other ones. So thought I'd cut it in half this uh, section here uh, to make the videos a little bit shorter for you here. So our next one that we're going to continue on with the branches are when we talk about what is science is we're actually going to have to talk about what the branches of science are. So the branches of science, just the different types that we have. So if you look here, again, the big thing here is this natural science, which again are things that occur in the natural world, things that we can see, things that we can hear and touch, again, things that are within our realm of understanding. And you can see there all the different branches. Don't need to worry about writing this down yet. Uh, we'll get a more in-depth look at each one of those. So we have physical science, physics, and chemistry. So this is going to be the main focus of our class are these two uh, physics and chemistry which we'll get to the definitions of those here in a second and if we have time we might even get to a little bit of earth and space science because those apply some of the same concepts within physical science so things like geology astronomy meteorology and oceanography and then next year as sophomores you will get into more of the life science which is biology and some different topics that we get into our zoology botany, ecology, and genetics. Uh, but again, you don't have to worry about that too much now. There'll be a little bit of overlap, maybe in physical science with some of those. But again, you'll have your whole sophomore year with me to hit on those topics. So uh, now we're gonna get a little breakdown about each one of these um, branches. So we start with physical science and it focuses on the non-living things. So we said that on the first day when I gave you the introduction about what the class is. And so we're only talking about non-living things and kind of how they work. Uh, what causes them to do what they do. So our two main branches within physical science are chemistry, which is the study of composition, structure, properties, and reactions of matter. So it's basically kind of the basics of how non-living things are made up, um, again, kind of what they look like, how they behave, and what happens when we put them together. Again, before we get into too much more in depth, that's probably the best uh, simple definition of chemistry that I can give you. And so then physics, which is again our other main branch, is the study of matter and energy and the interactions between the two through forces in motion. So remember we watched that sports science video talking about different velocities, talking about how much bigger and smaller things are, the size of things, and how that can kind of change uh, reaction times and all of that. That is all focused around physics, which again, once we get into more uh, in-depth uh, with the book, uh, these two words are going to make a lot more sense. But I would make sure I have these two written down and I know, again, have an idea of what chemistry and physics are, at least be familiar with them as we kind of dive into them uh, here this year. And so our next branch, which remember is earth science, and this is the application of physics and chemistry to the study of the earth. So our earth, we have kind of two uh, main branches within uh, earth science. We have geology, which is study of the origin, history, structure, and systems of earth. So basically a lot of people just think geologists maybe look at rocks, but it's basically how the earth is formed and kind of how it came to be, um, how it is today. And there's a lot more than geology that goes into the rocks. They do give us a lot of uh, details, but they might take a look again even at volcanoes, earthquakes, uh, things like that, any natural disasters that might occur. And then astronomy is the study of the universe beyond Earth, not to be confused with astrology, which is not a true science, but astronomy definitely is studying all the different stars, all the planets. Again, there's an infinite amount, almost, that an astronomer could study. And then the last branch, uh, the study of living things, which is known as biology, or life science. And biology includes the physics and chemistry of living things, as well as their origin and behavior. So the things that we are gonna learn uh, within physical science this year are going to apply to biology next year. They are, there is actually a lot of physical science that goes into the living things. And then biologists also, uh, they study the different ways that organisms grow, survive, and reproduce, which is a little bit outside of the realm of kind of this class. But again, like I said, you'll have plenty of time uh, to take that class with me next year. And again, kind of hitting on that same theme that was mentioned in the last slide, that there is overlap between areas of science. Uh, most of biology involves changes that are part of chemistry, while much of chemistry is defined by interactions that are part of physics. 
So you're not going to really be able to separate these branches of science. Again, you have to be familiar with all of them in order to be successful. That's why uh, you really feel like we need to get this class in for you guys your freshman year here because it is important. And then our last overlap here, which again, these two aren't directly connected up here in this string, but if you look down here, biophysics is a growing area of physics that applies to both physics and biology. Or I'm sorry, that applies physics to biology. So it's a direct relationship between the two. So to wrap up our first section here, uh, we kind of have to go over the big ideas of physical science. And again, they're just putting this out here to kind of give you an idea of what you can expect this year. So the first big idea in physical science is that the universe is both very old and very big. And that is really important. Uh, the age of the universe is extremely, extremely old. And again, we'll get into that. I'm not going to give you the exact figure now because I don't know if off the top of my head if I can give you the correct figure because it's probably changed since the last time I've heard it. So that's our first big idea. Our next one, again, another important big idea, is a very small amount of the universe is matter, and all matter that you're familiar with, familiar with is made up of building blocks called atoms. So this is going to be one of our first chapters that we get into studying what an atom is, its structure and makeup, and again, all the ins and outs of the atom. So be prepared for that coming up here in our next chapter. And then our last two big ideas is that forces causes change in motion and the law of physics allow these changes to be calculated exactly. So law, that's a big thing that shows something that's been proved over and over again. So the laws of physics are going to allow us to calculate, um, again, how fast a pitcher with a certain body weight and certain arm speed can throw a fastball. All those things are going to be able to be calculated almost exactly. And then energy, which is our last big idea, it exists in many forms, which you're going to see this year, and it can be transferred from one object to another, but it can never be destroyed. So that is, again, another big idea that we never destroy energy. We can transfer it from one form of the object to another. Again, never destroyed. And again, it'll make more sense when we actually get to that, but this is just to give us a quick introduction. So that is it for section one. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.